we should just start the time. And we've been talking about atonement or the miracle, and and this just saying that my mind is completely positive. That there's absolutely positively nothing in time, matter, space that's positive at all. You know, I mean, and and you can tell that, like Rhonda was saying the other day, that about everything that seems to come out of the mouth, if you just are just watching for content. You know, like I was noticing recently when you were just saying about Misha, if I lock Misha up. You know, she'll feel deprived, and then, when I let her out, you know, she'll even be more excited. Because, Misha's body being <laughs> put behind there, effects, <laughs> open the gate, <laughs> you know, it, you can just, it's just about anything you can think of has, it's so based on causation in the world. And so, to accept the atonement, and just hold to the fact that my mind is causative and there's absolutely nothing on the screen at all in the entire cosmos that has any kind of causation whatsoever, that's healing. And that's what this this kind of lesson's about. How are healing and atonement related? Healing and atonement are not related. They are identical. There is no order of difficulty in miracles because there are no degrees of atonement. It is the one complete concept possible in this world because it is the source of a wholly unified perception. Partial atonement is a meaningless idea, just as special areas of hell in heaven are inconceivable. Accept atonement and you are healed. Atonement is the word of God. Accept his word and what remains to make sickness possible. Accept his word, every miracle has been accomplished. To forgive is to heal. The teacher of God has taken accepting the atonement for himself as his only function. Where is there, then? He cannot heal. What miracle can be withheld from him? The next one, here we go into self-concept or transfer of training. What will I hold back from the atonement? <laughs> The progress of the teacher of God may be slow or rapid, depending on whether he recognizes the atonement is the atonement's inclusiveness, or for a time excludes some problem areas from it. In some cases, there is a sudden and complete awareness of the perfect applicability of the lesson of the atonement to all situations, but this is comparatively rare. The teacher of God may have accepted the function God has given him long before he has learned all that his acceptance holds out to him. <laughs> if I knew what I am, sorry, <laughs> I think I'll hear people say that. <laughs> yeah, Mother Teresa, he said, if I'd have known what, what was coming yeah. <laughs> at the time when I was young, I would never have stepped into this. But that's, she, she said not. Yeah, that speaks like facetious. It is only the end that is certain. Anywhere along the way, the necessary realization of inclusiveness may reach him. If the way seems long, let him be content. He has decided on the direction he wants to take. What more was asked of him? And having done what was required, would God withhold the rest? I think of that, if the way seems long, let it be content. I mean, it's like, there's the ladder, and you can get a sense of how, in a sense, how quickly you want, you want to climb, and you can't really go to the next rung until you really get a good push off <laughs> from the rung before. And it's really the desire and the willingness is the only thing that determines whether... How long you stay on anymore. Yeah, though. if it's going to be a long ladder or... Long or but that, that feels um, reassuring to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, be content where you are. Yeah. Don't worry about if it seems like it's taking long or... Mm -hmm. Don't get into judging based on increments yeah. in the world or comparisons. Of Just be content and keep, you know, stay on the path. Mm -hmm. That forgiveness is healing 
needs to be understood is the teacher of God is to make progress. The forgiveness being the reversal of the thoughts in the mind. All the backward ones having been turned around. The idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego thought system. That was a quick trip. <laughs> and that's like the underlying assumption. I mean, even when things are brought up, you know, even when we start the toe or the flu or the whatever, you know, it's the underlying assumption in the presenting problem is that, okay, now I obviously have a sick body. I feel it. I. I, or I have experienced it, you know, I, I have been through this. And the idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego's thought system. You know, it's, as, as we'll see as we go on this paragraph, it's very important for the ego to hold on to the idea that a, that a body can be sick. I mean, it's, it's, that's one of the strongest witnesses for the separation. That's one of the ace, aces in the hole. Because like Joey was describing, you know, she's in so much pain, she finally said, well, I give in, you know, it's like, or you get to a point where you just say, oh, forget it. Mm -hmm. Not gonna, you know, it's like you try to keep your mind on the truth, mm -hmm. but after a while, it's, uh, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't stop thinking about my toe or mm -hmm. my... And the more you think about it, the more the power you give it that. Like focusing on yeah. things. This thought gives the body autonomy, separates it from the mind, and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. Like the body has power over my mind to keep me distracted from the truth. And underneath it is I can't change my mind. I mean, that's what I hear when... I'm in pain. Speak. Yeah, and I I tried. I asked the Holy Spirit to see things differently. I, I, I want to not be in pain, but I can't do it. You know, it's got power over me. You know, there's something... And it's frustrating. And it's it's feeling of helplessness of this and that. I mean, it's, I mean, that's what... The mind has chosen it and then forgotten exactly what it shows, you know, in order that it seems that the body has power. And, and you know, when we get into the deeper, you know, it's the whole thing of the mind wants to hold on to the concept of itself as it perceives itself. It wants to hold on so dearly to the separation, to the small self. It's so invested in holding on to that. It's so terrified of, of letting that go and just going into that life that that seems like sickness is great, it's a great device, it serves value, you know, clearly provides a witness. Mm -hmm. to get your attention. Yeah, it draws my attention off the, off my mind again, back out there on the, the body and the mm -hmm. screen. It's actually watching what you're thinking, then. Mm -hmm. so all you think about is, ah, my toe hurts, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my elbow, God. Mm -hmm. And then the next thought, of course, when you get into more of the metaphysics, is like um, Louise's thing about, I want to understand this thing, I made myself sick. I mean, you know, then the mind has taken responsibility mm -hmm. for the attack thoughts and for what it perceives as, as sickness. So, I mean, that's, that's where the guilt is coming in anyway. The guilt is coming in from lining up with the wrong mind. You know, from raising body thoughts, that was one of the quotes that she had that she passed to me, that she wanted, you know, raising body thoughts to the level of mind. In other words, saying, I am responsible for behavior, I am responsible for, you know, things that the body seems to do and has done and, and so on and so forth. And if that's true, you know, then sins are only in bodies, but the mind has associated itself with the body, and that's where the guilt comes in. What's the rest of that quote? 
that, that um, bringing body thoughts to the level of mind would it's a level confusion. It's a level that, confusion. Okay. That's an example. Is that where it is? About yeah. Level confusion. Yeah. It's, okay. it's about level confusion. And really, it's the thing of of um, since their body thoughts are of the ego, and body thoughts are not of the right mind. But it's it's saying that really that body thoughts are causative is really what it means by to raise body thoughts to the level of mind. It's simply to say that that the body or something in matter is causative or creative. And you can see that's where the level of confusion occurs. The belief that that bodies actually act. I mean I started to get into that a bit in the sense that it seems in this world as if there are autonomous persons that that act autonomously. That it seems like, you know, in the deceased state, like Rhonda and David and Beverly and Dorothy have different minds. Dorothy's got a mind of her own. She can decide to come or to stay on with the island, you know, or Beverly has a mind of her own. She can decide to do this or do that, and Rhonda and David and everything. It really seems that way. I mean, that's that's a pretty accepted thing. That we're all persons. And part of being a person is to have a mind of your own. And it's still at the metaphor level because, you know, the mind has, the, 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 the seed mind has assigned to the mind the properties of the body. Well, the properties of the body are that we have four separate bodies, you know, in the seed mind sitting on, on the couch. And that each of these minds is also separate. When really there's just one mind, and all of the characters on the screen, all of the characters on the screen, are all part of playing out a, a, a script that's already been played out, and are all it's all been played out. So in other words, when I say that you know the mind wrote the, the script, it hired the characters, it gave out the parts, it's everything that's said is its own invention. This one sleeping mind has invented and projected out all these other bodies and that it says that there's all these other minds and it's given out all these parts and it's done the whole thing. There is absolutely nothing to be upset about when somebody says or does something. When Misha, another dream figure, seems to do or do something and you feel upset, is that's that's part of the script. I mean if if it's apart from my mind, if I'm a Rhonda and that's Misha, just a dog, not children, but that's just a dog, you know, then you see, and I'm upset at Misha's behavior or whatever, and I simply deny that that's just a thought or an image in my own mind. Yeah. I mean, what's the, if it's just an image, another image, what's the big deal? But you see, where the, when the meaning gets read, and this is, I'm a person, this is my house, this is, we have guests coming over, this is a, just a dog, the dog should not inhibit our social life, the dog should not, you know, be craving. You know, you can see where all that stuff gets read on as meaning, and then, by golly, before you know it, I'm upset at something mm -hmm. that the dog has done. So you can see that that from this perspective, you know, the bodies are not autonomous. They don't act apart from what my mind. I mean, they're just like thoughts that are that are in a concretized form that are acting out. So I'm not responsible for the the roles that I assigned in the sense that I'm not responsible for what is said or what is done by the characters that I'm responsible for how I perceive that. Yes. yes. For the yeah, that's all that's all it is really. Yes. Everything is how you feel of it, isn't it? <coughs> Everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, when I walk, I watch all this stuff. Yeah. And like as I'm going along, I kind of think, well, I'll see somebody to talk to. And I know that I'm going to still be. I'll put somebody there that I can talk to. Sure enough, there she was. She shouted, hello, good morning. Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say? <laughs> oh, I don't live here. I'm just visiting. Um, you've got a nice car. Oh, yes, we've had our house. 